Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we're going to be talking about the new products from Lisa Eldridge. So she just launched a new eyeshadow palette. This is the Fawn eyeshadow palette, which is a neutral eyeshadow palette and a new liquid eyeshadow formula. So this is the Liquid Silk Liquid Eyeshadow. These are a matte eyeshadow. She did launch five shades for this and I bought two of the five to try out. And I've been playing with both of these shadows and the palette for about a week and a half now since I got them done multiple wear tests of 12 hours plus and used them with other products. Really wanted to get my opinion formed before I made this video and I definitely have my thoughts, so I'm really excited to talk about them. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup. And I particularly like sparkly indie eyeshadow and some more high-end and luxe eyeshadows and makeup. Um, and I tend to be pretty analytical in the content I make. I try really hard to make thorough, thoughtful, analytical videos, and I have new videos every week, so I'd really love to have you subscribe. So I'm very excited to talk about these. I have been playing around for about a week and a half since these came. Pretty much every day, this is all I've been wearing, and I definitely have my thoughts. I've done multiple, like, 12-hour wear tests, I think one day 15, 16 hours, although I didn't actually record that. Um, so I have clips for those to insert later. I do have some comparisons here, palette for the palette and for the liquid formula to talk about those. Um, and I'm just really excited to talk about these. I've been really enjoying myself and I have some thoughts about the formulas themselves. So I'm gonna do some basic info now and I'll have timestamps for everything like normal. <laughs> and then I will have, and I'll have everything linked down below like normal as well. So I will do some basic info now We'll do a demo so I can show you the products in action and how they perform, and then I can do some comparisons and some final thoughts. So this is the Fawn eyeshadow palette. It's the same packaging as all the other ones. I have a couple of the other ones right here. I really like this packaging. It, they stand up pretty nicely in the little bin I have for these set aside. Um, the little curve here is really beautiful. I like the packaging. It's reminiscent of the bottle of foundation. Everything's gold for Lisa's packaging, which I love. Um, it, it, it's just her standard packaging, which I really appreciate. Um, and then it has six neutral eyeshadows, well, five neutral eyeshadows and one kind of pop of color shimmer. So this is just like her other ones where you can pop them out and they're magnetic. You can buy these shades as individual singles or refills. So if you really go through one of them, you can replace it and you can customize them. Um, they're not labeled. I don't know if the singles are, but I know these shadows aren't, but I have printed out labels. I just need to make ones for this one now so that I can mix and match because I have OCD, like diagnosed OCD, and I will make my own custom palettes, but eventually I need to know what shadows what and where they belong in their like original house, so I need to have them labeled before I do that with this. Um, I, you can tell, have been using this quite a bit. I really like this color story. It is very neutral. I was a little worried that it looked, some of the pictures I saw online looked a little cool tone, some looked a little warm, which makes sense for a neutral palette. But I think this is very true to name as a neutral palette. The theme for this is um, the Upper East Side, New York, um, and I used to live in New York, I miss New York, um, so that made me happy, so, like, one of the shades is Upper West Side, uh, but I also kind of get 90s vibes for this, um, if you take away the shadow, like, the mattes and the tones of these, like, neutral browns just makes me think of the 90s, that could also be part because I've been re-watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer for, like, the 50th time, <laughs> um, and, it just, there's something about those like, you know, kind of neutral, cool, smoky eyes that everyone had that this reminds me of. So Lisa has a bunch of different formulas in her eyeshadow palettes. I think there are six formulas, if I'm not mistaken, and this has five of them. So this has her Seamless Matte formula, which I adore. One of my like top three eyeshadow like formulas. Um, her Velvet, which is her more cream to powder, although they're both very creamy and kind of feel like a cream to powder. Um, the Seamless Matte does have a little bit of pearl, so it looks matte, but there is a little bit of pearl in there that just makes it really smooth and really easy to blend, and I think why it leads to that creamy side. 
The velvet is a cream to powder. This also has a satin duo, so that is the shade right here, which you can see goes from this pink shade to more of a gold. And then there is a luminous shade, which is this white tie. I love the luminous formula. I think there's, I don't, the only palette from her I don't own is uh, Muse. I almost bought it uh, during the Selfridges sale, but I went back to get it and the sale was over. <laughs> but because um, that one leans a little pink, and so I really want it for like four of the six shades um, and don't want to pay, you know, 60 something dollars for it. If I, there's a couple shades I don't know if I'll love, the more pink ones. Um, but love the Luminous formula. There is one in uh, Vega, which I do have here, and I think there's one in, there's one in Sorcery, and those are like my favorite shadows in those palettes. And then there's a luster, which is this shade down here. This is the shade Dorian. Uh, the only other luster I know of is in Muse. So this is my first time trying it. Really like that formula. And then, yeah, that's everything. So you've got the velvet, two mattes, a luster, which is pretty much a satin, this duochrome, and then the luminous, which is a sparkly shade. I really like these and it is very neutral. So this is a taupe. This is kind of a neutral taupe. It is a very good sculpting shade for me. Um, but like a little light, so if you're darker than me, I don't, you might have to use it a little differently. Um, this is a really nice soft neutral brown, and then you've got Burnt Clove, which is a really beautiful kind of charcoal, and then you've got the sparkly shade. I did pull out Cinnabar and Vega, which are warm and cool tones, so we can do those comparisons later, side by side. And then there are the liquid eyeshadows. This is the Liquid Silk Eyeshadow. Spoiler, I really like it. Um, there are five shades, but they are around $30. Um, and so I only wanted to pick up two to see what I think about the formula. I definitely want more of them and I want more colors. So I picked up a Phoebe, which is a light um, golden shade. And then I picked up Gaia, which is a like warm golden brown. There is also Ioni, I think is the one that is more of a, cr a gray, like, cool tone gray taupe kind of shade, but looks beautiful. I don't know how it's gonna look against my undertones, so I wish I could see it in person, but I'm not <laughs> in the UK, so I can't. Um, and then there is a light peachy color, like a more cool peachy tone. And then there is Talia, which is a like deep rosewood, and I really want that I one. I would like them all, and I would also like, like a dark cool tone shade, kind of like the luster shade in here and then maybe some fun colorful ones later in the line. But for now, really like these, and I want all of them, I just can't really afford to at the moment. So these have new ingredients and are a different formula from the Liquid Lorex, that's why they have a different name. I love the Liquid Lorex, that is her metallic sparkly liquid eyeshadow. I have like four or five of these, and I want more of them, I want all of them. Love that formula. I do have to use an eyeshadow primer with it, so I talked to the brand on um, Instagram a long time ago. I don't remember if it was, I think it was a member of her team that responded because they'll just, they'll say like, hi, this is Blink from Lisa's team. And then I think if they just say something otherwise, I think it's just might be Lisa Eldridge. Um, that's what I've assumed in past conversations. <laughs> but uh, I do, they should recommend that I use, and Lisa recommended I to, through that person that I use the NARS eyeshadow base. And that was when I first tried that fell in love with it, and that is now my go-to eye primer. I have oily eyelids, so these look pretty, but after a few hours, definitely crease and start to kind of fade away. These have different ingredients that are supposed to smooth the skin, even your skin tone, like smooth, and like if you have texture, smooth it out and be very soothing to the skin. And they have ingredients that are self-setting, so these are supposed to be used, you can use them alone, you can use them as a base, and you can use them as uh, an eye primer basically, like especially this lighter one. So I have done that, I've worn them alone, I've worn them with other palettes, I've worn them with Fawn, I've used them as a base, um, both shades as a base for looks, and I really like them. So let's get into the demo. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with Phoebe today. I do really like Gaia. So if you know me and you've watched my videos before, I do talk about like day-to-day -day life, I will often just put like primer down and then bronzer because even bronzer is not gonna last on my lids. And this 
makes that even easier. I can put a couple dots on, blend it out, and add that little bit of warmth and sculpt to the lid, but without really needing much. And I can run out the door really fast. Like this, I, I love this. Um, and I think you can even, I don't, she didn't say so, but I have used this to see if I could use it as bronzer and it even worked for that. So I think this could be an interesting blush or bronzer formula in the future um, or modified to be one. I think that would be really cool because they do self set and they have that like soothing, softening blur effect. I think that it could be potentially really nice. Um, but I'm gonna start with Phoebe because this is a lighter shade. So it's a really good base shade for me. This I did use with Natasha Denona's Warm Palette, and I do have a clip of that to insert later. Beautiful, loved it. I've also used it with Fawn, but I'm gonna start with Phoebe. So I've used it with a brush and finger. I like finger better. So I'm just gonna use a little bit. You don't need much, so that's that much. And I did find with a brush, it blended nicely. I was able to buff it. It was a little more sheer with a brush, but it took like a little bit longer. I think I just like it with my finger more. And you can see this one is pretty much my skin tone. So it's like a perfect even out the lid, hide any like discoloration or redness or use as a skin tone um, base shade for an eyeshadow look. And I just pat it because this one matches my skin tone pretty well. It doesn't, it's golden. It doesn't have the olive of my skin, but it's close enough that it just taps up all the way to my brow, gives me a nice smooth matte look, works well as a base, and it's already pretty much dry. And so you can see side by side, it looks like my skin, but see how like there's a little bit of shine. You can see some of these veins. There's a little crease. It just kind of smooths and blurs everything and so there's been at least one day that I just wore this. I wore her skin tint and this, and I think that was it. I didn't even wear mascara and I just went about the day. No one could tell I was wearing makeup. It just looked good. And I just, I really like this formula. I really want to see what the other shades look like on my skin tone. Um, this one definitely adds a little bit more golden bronze or golden brown. And I have tried mixing them and you get kind of an in-between shade. So I really like that. And you can also put like this on the lid, put this up here in the crease. You can do a whole eye look with just these two. Um, I'm gonna put this on the other eye as well. So I just do a little bit. You really don't need much because it's so pigmented and blends so easily. You could easily overdo it and get way more than you need. So I would say start with less Wow, there's a lot of noisy cars out there today. I don't know if you could hear that, but I just heard like a loud vroom of someone zooming up the hill. And I just, it looks so nice and it's, you have enough play time, but it still, it dries down really beautifully. And there's it on my finger so you can see it's, like a, it's very similar to my skin tone a little bit more just plain golden than olive, but it just works so well. I have used it with a brush. I like it with a brush. I got kind of a thin layer and then I did a second little bit on my lid. So if you don't like using your fingers, a brush works fine. But I think with this texture, like it just works best with a finger because you the warmth of your finger just really presses it in and you get a really seamless look with either of these, even with this one. <clears throat> Okay, I just realized I forgot to zoom in, but that's fine. Also, if you're curious about the rest of the makeup I'm wearing, it's mostly Lisa Aldridge. So I have a little bit of Velvet Decade on my lips, which was discontinued, but I was able to pick it up in London while I was there and I really like it. So I just have it lightly blended into the lips with my finger. Um, ow, it's how I like a lot of matte lipsticks to be worn. So you get like a stain and a wash of color. I have a bit of her foundation on around the center of my face and I don't have concealer on. I just have a little bit of foundation. I used a fluffy brush. Um, I don't have it with me over here, but I just had a small fluffy brush and I blended it around my nose, around my jawline where I had a little bit of spots from shaving and then under my eyes as concealer basically. And then I used 
um, her, I've done this in a video before, but I used Solar Light in her liquid highlighter and a little bit of Velvet Dragon, Velvet Teen Dragon, the liquid lipstick, about two dots of this and a little blob of this on the back of my hand and mix those together and use that as a glowy blush, which is a go-to for me. Um, it's glowy, but it lasts all day and it looks just beautiful. I really want to get Velveteen Affair because I feel like the brown will work well for that too. So hopefully zoomed in, you can see the liquid shadow. It's like not there, but it is there, which is exactly what I would want for this kind of a shade. Um, and so I'm gonna go into the palette. I'm gonna use the, seam, the velvet shade Upper West Side first, just so you can see it on my skin tone in case that is helpful. I'm just gonna grab a Sonia G brush. This is like basically a big pencil brush. It's the TS3 and it is a cream, it is a cream to powder. So it does work really well with your fingers as well. And I might do that, but you can see it's taupe and very similar in depth to this liquid shadow. So I find it adds a nice sculpt if I'm using just like eye primer that has no color or on this, it adds just a little bit of extra. Like it adds that little bit of dimension in the crease if I put it there without like looking like much. And you can see it just sends a little bit more taupe, a little more neutral, little taupe. If I use a finger and pick up some, you can see it is pretty light, neutral taupe. And if I put it on the lid, it just kind of neutralizes a little bit of that golden and sculpt. So it's a really nice sculpting shade if you're a, for a subtle sculpt. I've also used it as a contour, like I've fully used it on my face and my nose as a contour and it works very well. Um, but it is light. I would love basically this exact shade, but like a little darker um, as a contour, like that I could use as a, like a little bit more of a contour or on someone darker than me could use it in the same fashion. I really like how neutral it is. It is very neutral, it is not cool. It is not warm at all. It just looks really nice. It is a nice sculpting shade. And if you're lighter than me, I think it'll sculpt a little bit more. You'll see it more, but with my skin tone, this is what it looks like. So in case you're a similar skin tone, that is what it does. I've used it on its own and you see it a little bit better that way than on the golden base, like if I just put it over our eye primer, but just a neutral, adds that nice little bit of sculpt without looking like anything. And it, the fact that it's the cream to powder, I think also helps that. In person, I don't know if it'll show up on camera as well, but in person, I definitely can tell the difference and see that like taupey shadow in my crease. And then I'm gonna use a bunch of these shades just to kind of demo them. Um, but my go-to for work has been maybe a little bit of Supernaturally, which is the brown here. And then I've been putting the luster shade all over the lid. If I want to smoke it out more, I can use this and I have once, but I just keep going into Dorian, putting it all over the lid and just being done with it. So I'm going to grab another small brush. This is fluffy, but small. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Supernaturally so you can kind of see that. And... You can see that is also a really good sculpting shade for my skin tone or someone a little bit darker because it adds just a little bit more. This one is the powder formula, the seamless matte. Place that in the crease. I've also put it all over the lid before for a kind of one and done look. I like a matte one and done look, but you can see it's a little bit darker, but still very neutral. Just a nice neutral soft brown. So if I pick up a little bit extra on the same brush and put it on the lid, like that neutral, almost cool against my olive undertone, but not like gray cool. So it is very neutral and it just looks so good. I've worn just this to work a couple times now. Okay, so I just copied that over on the other eye really like soft sculpt to the eye. Um, and then I'm gonna put, instead of putting it in all over the lid like I have, because I have those clips, I want to use 
the duochrome all over the lid, but I'm gonna put a little bit of the luster on the outer corner just so you can see it. So I'm just picking up a small, a small pencil brush and picking up a little bit of the luster shade Dorian. You can see the tone. If I add um, burnt clove, it gets darker. So if you want a lot of smoke, you can. But you can see how that all over the lid is just like a perfect neutral smoky eye. Um, I work was crazy this week because we, uh, I'm working, right now I'm, tech, I'm working in student housing and school starts next week. So it was move in weekend. And so it was like the last three weeks have been vendors and dealing with scheduling everything and cleaning and having everything done and fixed. And then the last three days until yesterday was helping hundreds of people move in and get their stuff, get their keys, check them in, just and running the building and phone calls and emails at the same time. And I definitely wore this at least one of the days, just adorning it all over with a little bit of blended out the edges with the Supernaturally shade. So really like that. And then I'm gonna go into this, the duochrome. I'm gonna grab a brush to show you how it works on a brush. The luminous shade is just a beautiful like white sparkle. Um, but I do like this better with a finger, but I do wanna show you with a brush. So it picks up very nicely. And you do get just kind of a nice wash of warmth and pink. So you got pink and gold. So if you do it with the brush, it's a little bit more of a wash of sparkle. Looks really nice over uh, Gaia. Just put Gaia down and then put this on. But it's, I like with her, eyesh her metallic eyeshadows in general, the satins or the more metallics. If you use a brush like this, you get just kind of this wash of shine. But then if you use your finger, you get a little bit more. And I like sh formulas that are made like that, that you can manipulate and use in different ways. So that is the shade, what is that? Debutante. So it's not a high shine metallic. It is very neutral, or very everyday, I would say, because it has that little bit of a pink and gold shift. And if you put it over something like just these, if you don't have the satin on there, or if you just used um, the taupe or used Gaia, you would pull a little more warm but I was worried it was gonna to be too pink because I don't really like pink on me, but it is, it is definitely a pink gold and it does say satin duochrome. Yeah, so it is definitely a satin. There is a bit of sparkle and shine, but not like metallic and not like the luminous, which is very sparkly. It's like a perfect, you know, everyday shade if you want this as your everyday. So it's very soft, very pretty if you want high impact, this is not the shade for you, but she does have more high impact shades, including the luminous shade. So I'm gonna swatch that and you can see it is way more shiny and just gives you that wet sheen. Like up close, I do see like the little pinky champagne pearls, but when you buff it out, it's just this beautiful wet effect really like that and I will put a little bit of that on top and if you use it like this you can also just kind of get a little bit of sparkle added so I like using either or but because I don't have the most time I'm going to show you both and it's just so pretty it adds a little bit more shine if I rub it up here you can see a little bit of that kind of wet sheen really beautiful. I love the Luminous formula. I want so many more of them. And then I just like to tap up. I want to be able to see the definition in my crease and out here from the mats and then having like a sheer sheen or sheer sparkle kind of go up and blend everything together is just how I like to do my makeup. Okay. I'm gonna go wash my hands and put on some mascara and I'll be right back to do the comparisons and final thoughts. 
Okay, so I'm back and this is the finished look. All I did was add some of my Lisa Aldridge mascara and a little bit of the ground coffee eyeliner from Lisa Aldridge. It's my favorite eyeliner pencil formula. I really need more shades. So I just tight lined with that on the bottom and top and then threw on the mascara. Really like this. You can still see a little bit of the pinky gold in there, but then there's that sheen over everything. It's not like too sparkly, but it is still really beautiful. It's exactly what I expected from a true neutral palette, um, even with that fun like pinky gold shade. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can talk about the formulas and comparisons. So for the comparisons, um, I did pull out a couple other neutral palettes that I have. I don't have any like true neutral like big palettes. I feel like it's kind of hard to do true neutral in like that many shades. So there are a couple other luxury <laughs> branded um, quads uh, and or small pa palettes. And then I've got a few liquid shadows to do those comparisons. So um, first I wanna show Fawn next to Vega. So Vega is her cool tone palette and one of my favorites. And I just want you to see, so when you see them side by side, you can really see how much, how neutral this is. So Vega is definitely cool toned. You do have the shade here, which is Turbulence in the Seamless Matte Formula. I would say that's like cool neutral. It's a little similar, a little darker and a little cooler than this one. And I'll do a swatch of the two side by side in a second. And then you have this more gray shade, the slate blue and the matte black, and then you have two cool tone shimmers. Really love these. This one is also a luminous formula, um, and I'll do those side by side as well. But you can really see how much cooler that is. And then when you put it next to something warm, like Cinnabar, which has been discontinued, but you can still get the shades as individuals, um, you can see how, how like almost cool tone this looks in comparison to the warmth of this, the like, red base of this ochre shade and the golden base of this. This is kind of the shade Phoebe in matte form. So you can really see just how neutral this is where it looks almost cool next to this. And then when you pull it next to the neutral, it looks very neutral. I also grabbed my YSL quad. This is the shade 100. And of course the little brushes fall out. <laughs> and this is a cooler neutral quad. So if you look side by side, you can see these are very neutral mattes with more of a cool tone shimmer. So you've got kind of this peachy satin and then these two neutral browns down here. So this is very neutral, almost cool compared to this. And then when I do it next to my Surat quad, which is the Beyond Beige, which the shade, the two matte shades in this are grayish and brune noir. And they're over here. You can see this has been my favorite like neutral palette. This one is grayish, so it's like a nice neutral taupey brown. It's pretty similar to this shade right here, um, but a satin instead of a felt cream to powder. And then this like dark brown that's kind of in between these two. Or like this if it was a satin instead of the luster. So it's cool, I think almost cool tone, but, but, but neutral. This is very neutral for me and my skin tone, this is very neutral. So I'm gonna, Bean, you're okay. So I'm gonna swap super naturally from this palette versus, what is that? Turbulence again from the other Turbulence. They're both seamless mattes. So you can see here is Supernaturally and here is Turbulence. So you can see Turbulence is a little cooler. And this almost has a little bit of an olive undertone to it when you see it like this. So this is the Supernaturally shade and this is Turbulence. So you can see that more See how much more neutral this is and how this pulls more cool taupe on me. So I really enjoy Turbulence and it's been a good sculpting shade for me, but I really enjoy the, the tone of this. 
And then if I do this luster next to it, you can really see that texture. So you can see the luster has that really beautiful pearl effect. So it's a really beautiful satin, just kind of sheen. I really love the luster shade. And then to do the two from Surratt. So this is the gray shade and this is the Brun Noir. You can see the Brun Noir is much darker and grayish is again neutral, but like very faint. So you can see these are, I would say very neutral. So then you see just a little bit of almost warmth or olive undertone to this in comparison. Just really beautiful. And then I'll, and then I'll do these two shades right here in the YSL quad. So you can see this one has more of a shine, uh, has a satin tone to it. And then this neutral brown here, almost cool tone. It's kind of taupe. So those are the matte comparisons between some other similar things. And then if I put in like, you know, raw sienna from uh, Cinnabar, you can see just how much warmer it is. So if I put it next to, if I put those shades next to Supernaturally, you can see it's kind of olive looking, which I think is why I love it so much. And you can see the, the red in that and the gold in that. So really like this. I'm gonna go wash these off and then we'll do the shimmers and the liquid shadows. For the shimmers, I just wanted to compare the luminous shades so you can see. I don't really have a direct comparison to this. It is just that satin suit duochrome, but I did wanna show the luminous shade. This is white tie compared to the luminous shade Supernova from Vega. Really love Supernova. It's one of my favorite shades that I own. So here is white tie and it's pretty much just like a white sheen wet effect. So if you hold it this way, you see there's no really no base. And then Supernova is just like a pinkier version. There's a little bit of that pinky base. Really love these. But if I do it next to the Duochrome, you can see the Duochrome is definitely more satin. It's very sheer and just gives that like gold base with a pink sheen really pretty versus, you know, one of her actual metallics. This one's from Cinnabar that has full like metallic opacity. My favorite kind of shimmers are more like this luminous. Okay, so I wanna quickly show these two swatch side by side. I did post swatches on Instagram when I first got them um, and then compare them to a couple other formulas. So if I put Gaia right here and I'll put BB right here. You can see Gaia is just that beautiful golden brown. Really love it. Talia is the rosewood, so a little more red version of that that I definitely want to get. And then when you compare it to a liquid Lurex, you can, I mean, this is obviously metallic, but it's a similar doe foot and you get, you know, shine and metallic. Um, metallic particles, pearl. This is Anais, which is kind of a gray olive. One of my favorites. But the way these set down is very different from the way the liquid Lurex set down. And then I grabbed a couple matte liquid shadows. I have other metallic ones. This is from the Violet FR. Um, and this I mean, obviously is blue and not brown because I don't have their browns, but if I put it next to it, you can see the consistency is very different. This is a little thinner. These are a little thicker, but not in a bad way. Um, there's like a, like a velvety, silky texture to it. This is more like liquid paint which is what a lot of matte liquid eyeshadows are that I've used. This works really beautifully as an eyeliner. These last all day, they stay on all day. They set down just like the Lisa Eldridge, but you can see it's a little thinner and it's more just like 
a, a thin eye safe paint. The house labs ones are very similar. I do have a brown in this. These set even faster. You have to work really quickly. I do like this all over the lid, kind of like Gaia, but these are again called paints and they feel they're a little thinner. It comes out of like a tube, but you can see it's a little thinner. The texture is just very different. It is more like a paint. You have to work quickly. I can use this as a bronzer too if I'm really fast or I blend it in with, like I'll blend it in with some glow lust and use it as kind of a glowy bronzer. So that's why I was like, this should work too. Um, but you can see it's, it's thinner and a little more paint-like and you can see that's already drying on the edge. And then this is from Fluorasis or Fluorosis. I'm never actually sure how to pronounce it. I've never heard the brand say it. They sent me all of their liquid eyeshadows this summer and I have really enjoyed them. This is more of a cool tone chocolatey brown. And you can see it's not the same consistency as Lisa's, obviously. Um, it's a little more, but it's not as like paint-like as that one. I would say it's kind of in between the House Labs and the Lisa Eldridge one. I also have had the About Face ones, but I returned those because I hated them. They were patchy. They were like a patchy version of the Aviola FR. Like they didn't want to dry down. They wouldn't be opaque. They didn't layer on each other. These layer, the Lisa Eldridge ones, I've you know put this down as a base, put this in the crease. You can layer them beautifully together. They're not just like a one and done matte base. You can blend them, you can layer them, you can use them with things. And the fact that they last all day is just really beautiful. I do also really like these. I haven't actually done a video on them. Um, I feel bad, but I do really like these. It is a different, a very different formula. Um, it doesn't have that silky, soothing, soft velvet kind of texture. Um, it is a little tackier feeling, a little sticky, a little bit more like, the House Labs doesn't feel tacky, but it does still feel kind of paint-like. Yeah, these all feel more like paint. This feels like liquid silk. I think the name was very perfectly done. Like, it feels like liquid silk. Okay, I'm gonna wash this off real quick and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, so I went and washed these off. I do think these are the ones from Lisa and House Labs. They have great stain powder. I, I need to use micellar water or makeup remover. I just washed with regular soap. Hi, Bean. Um, my dog's decided to come out of the bedroom finally. Um, but I really like these. I love the formula. Like, I've pretty much loved everything I've tried from Lisa Aldridge. I never tried the liquid blushes when those were around. Um, I think that was a packaging issue why those aren't anymore, but I would love to see those come back. I can't wait to see more colors come out in these and try the other ones. My final thoughts are I think these are beautiful products and worth your money if they're worth it for you. So if you like neutral eyeshadows and this is gonna be a palette you'll use all the time because it's like $65, I think it's a beautiful palette. If you already have a lot of neutrals, obviously you don't need to get it. Um, and if you don't think these would work with your skin tone or hurt shades you're gonna use, don't don't try them. But especially if you like a cream to powder formula, if you like the satin shadow or like that luminous texture, I think this is a really beautiful neutral palette and this has already become a staple and I think this is basically gonna be my daily palette for all of fall. Like, it's so easy especially because I don't wake up early <laughs> to do a lot of complicated makeup before work. So throwing a couple of these shadows on or putting them over one of these has been amazing to actually like put a little skin tint on, put one of these high beam <laughs> and feel a little bit more put together for work has been great. These are wonderful. I 100% think that they are worth the money. They are expensive, but I have never used a liquid shadow like this. Like, yes, you can get the about face ones for cheaper. I think those are like 20 bucks or something at Ulta. These are, you know, 20 something at Sephora, maybe 30. I don't remember. Um, but I think this is just a very unique formula. I've never used anything quite like it and I really love it. And the fact that I can use them alone 
or as primer and they last all day is great. So I forgot to include <laughs> little clips. So I have a couple clips I'll put up here and play as I'm talking. I did multiple wear tests where I wore these for 12 plus hours. The day I wore Gaia was busy at work. I was helping coordinate people, cleaners and carpet cleaners and maintenance techs and a bunch of people coming in and out of the building. So I was running the office and then periodically like running upstairs to open something or take someone somewhere. I was running up and downstairs. I think I did 10 or 11,000 steps at office, at my office, like in my building <laughs> and went up the to the fifth floor you know, I went up multiple flights of stairs over and over again. I was sweaty, it was warm out, and it still lasted beautifully. I would say around the 10 hour mark, I did notice a little bit of creasing, and I had some fading right here on the outer edge, but only on this eye, not on this eye, so I think that might have been my eye, some skincare there or something. Um, the other day that I wore it by itself, I didn't have that issue, but I do notice, I would say like 10 hours is when I, if I wear it by itself, I start to notice some creasing. Um, I see a little bit of fading, I see a little bit of creasing, and it gives me that kind of lived in look, which for a neutral one and done kind of shade, I like that like lived in look. That, um, and the fact that it doesn't even, it takes like nine hours for that to even happen, nine, 10 hours, I think, and being that active, I think is fantastic. And then using it with Natasha Denona's warm palette that came out, I used Guy all over the lid and put one of the sparkly shades over it, lasted all day, no creasing, no fading. And using Phoebe as a base for this palette and for a couple other palettes, I did multiple, again, like 12, 13 hour days, wore it all day to work, plus home, through dinner and everything. And it lasted all day. Um, reinforcing this with powder over it, um, made, like never creased, never faded. So. Putting something like the cream to powder on it was a little creamier, and I would say I did notice a little bit of fading around the 10 hour mark, but when I used just like powder powders, like the Natasha Denona powders or something over them, none at all. All day, like wore it till bedtime, and it was fine. So I think if you're in the market for these products and they're in your budget, I think they're worth trying. I would pick up like one that you think you'll use the most and give it a go, um, but absolutely adore these. So can't wait to get more. I really love Lee Eldridge as a brand. I do want to say I've been wanting to do like a Lee Eldridge brand video. I've done a few of those brand videos like Surratt and stuff. Um, she did mention she has a couple more palettes coming out probably this year and a concealer probably early next year. So I wasn't sure if you'd want me to wait until I review the concealer and when that comes out eventually or if you'd like something earlier um, like an end, near the end of this year let me know. I've tried pretty much a little bit of everything from the brand. There's definitely more of each product that I would love to get. I just don't have that money. So if you are interested in seeing that this year or sometime in the next couple months, please let me know in the comments. I would love to do that for you. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on all of these products. <laughs> and I think that wraps everything up. This is gonna be a long video and I'm sorry about that. But like I said, I like to be thorough and I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> so. As always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. And I will see you all in my next video.